All right. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our first coffee chat. Um, we're hoping you'll give us a little feedback after this so we know how to improve these, being we have nine more after this. I hope you've signed up for at least one more, maybe something that you found of interest that could help you or your coworkers or something that you'd like to get involved with. The reason that we've created these coffee chats is United Way, um, our, our organization has lots of in-house programs and these programs are extremely impactful, but I think sometimes they're a well-kept secret or we may mention them, but you really don't know what that program does or how it impacts our community. And I'm so pleased um, that we're doing the first one today is our We Care program. And everything that we do positively affects our community. It changes lives. This program is literally saving lives. And I just get goosebumps every time I think about it because, wow, what um, a better way to know that your investment in United Way is truly making a difference and saving lives. So with that, I would like to introduce Amy Singer. She is the director of our week program. Amy? Absolutely. Good morning. And thank you all of you for tuning in to learn a little bit more about the We Care. Um, this morning, I am taking this call from home because we've got some exciting things going on at our Bell Tower location, in which we have about 700 teachers receiving um, Christmas in July items for themselves and for their classrooms. So I figured with that chaos, um, I better take this phone call and everything in the Zoom from home. Um, I've been with the United Way for about seven years now and worked in many different capacities. However, However, I can say I absolutely love our We Care program. Um, we Care has been in house now with the United Way for a little bit over a year. And what it does is that We Care provides specialty medical care for the low income, uninsured, completely free of charge through a network of volunteer providers. We are in partnership with the Department of Health with their program called the Volunteer Healthcare Provider Program, also known as VHCPP. You can only imagine how long it took me to um, memorize that acronym correctly. And what this does basically is we are trying to remove barriers to health. Um, we know that there are so many healthcare inequalities and we're addressing these chronic healthcare conditions and that cannot be um, uh, basically cared for by a primary care physician. This program help meets that critical care. And what we're trying to do is help people become healthier, um, able to work, uh, self-sufficient in which they can take care of their families and help to reduce the burden on our local um, healthcare systems and emergency rooms. We rely on the generosity and support of these providers to provide this wonderful care. What we do is we provide care through a network of providers and um, the referral process, they have to be 200% or below the poverty level with absolutely no insurance. So no Medicare, um, no health insurance. We treat all ages. Uh, it used to be ages 18 to 64 because we felt that there were some other programs normally under 18 that was providing great care and over 64 being eligible for Medicare. However, now we are um, treating anybody that needs to be treated. When I mentioned specialty care, this is traditionally things that um, uh, a primary care physician cannot treat. It's a uh, not a self-referral program. Uh, those have to be referred by a physician or um, a network like family health centers. And anybody can refer to us. They don't have to be participating in order to refer to our network. When I say participating, this means that um, a provider, and when I say provider, that can be anybody from a physician, a nurse practitioner, RN, um, a PA can be participating. And what we do is they complete a simple application and we give that to the Department of Health. They sign a contract. And with this contract, any provider that's providing these services completely free of charge to our client receives sovereign immunity from the state. They also have perks and benefits. They receive continuing medical education credits, as well as um, a waiver of their biannual license fees. Just to give you a little bit of information on the impact of this particular program, that last year, 301 providers provided $8.4 million of in-kind care. 
We just look at this on a day-to-day -day basis and think it's wonderful. Um, the process is very simplistic. We have two great patient care coordinators. And what happens is people traditionally send us a referral along with pertinent medical records. We then look at what um, this is and send it out among our network of providers asking them to take this patient. They're never obligated to accept any patients. Um, we have some that take seven a month that um, never turn us down. Uh, advocate radiation is one of those. And then we have some that say, you know, I do two major surgeries per year. And we're just very mindful of, of anything that they can give us. And we are, of course, just very thankful of that. Um, I just want to let you know that um, all the patients are pre-qualified. What we do, our patient care coordinators, we get a referral. We then, in turn, um, look to the providers that are getting acceptance for care. And um, once we do that, we do that in a very timely basis. We've even had cases in which um, a woman has been diagnosed with breast cancer on a Thursday and has been in on a, that next following Tuesday for care. So we just think that um, it's such a wonderful thing. Two of our main objectives of We Care are to serve as many individuals as we possibly can within the Southwest Florida community. We have especially seen an increase um, with COVID related that a lot of people have lost their insurance. Um, and I just want to give you uh, another example, too, is we're trying to recruit more specialty providers. Uh, we realize we have a great network. However, we're always looking for more providers. So if you're out in the community and you know somebody that may be interested in being a We Care provider, myself or my staff would be more than happy to go and talk with them. Um, just a couple of good example stories that I wanted to share with you today, just the value and impact. Um, because when you're making a donation to United Way, and um, it is going not only to our amazing agencies, but our in-house programs such as this. Um, and and to give you an example, there were two women, and I'm going to read to you so I get this right. Um, this was a an email from our Director of Social Services at Family Health Centers. They're our biggest referral source. And she says, Amy, our team wants to thank you and your team for a wonderful week. We have many difficult cases. We're jumping with joy and thanking God for being able to find services for our cancer patients. Please know that the women were in tears. We had a huge lump in our throats trying to keep it together. Please tell them our, we are blessed and we're blessed to have we care. So you can only imagine um, being diagnosed with a devastating cancer diagnosis. These two women were diagnosed with breast cancer, both under the age of 40. Um, so you can imagine having that, that, unbelievable diagnosis, but then knowing that you're going to get this treatment completely free of charge. We also had another gentleman that went into our office the other day and um, he was just hesitant about, you know, filling out this paperwork and just thought, okay, there's no way I'm going to be accepted. He had had an injury, lost his job during COVID. Um, he was a, uh, a cook and had a hand injury, needed surgery, and then needed a rotator cuff shoulder surgery. And we were able to get him his hand surgery. I spoke with him just last week and he said, you know, I feel like I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. My unemployment ends in August. He said that we screened him. Uh, that's the great thing. Uh, we try to get them insurance or on Medicaid. We screened them for the Affordable Care Act. He said he couldn't afford the $500 a month for that insurance because his unemployment was only so much. He's like, I can still cook, but I can't even lift the basket to be a fry cook. And he said, um, I really need to get this other surgery by August to be able to provide for my family. And we found out this week that one of our providers is going to do his surgery next week. So it's just knowing these services on a day-to-day -day basis makes that impact. And we get those feel-good stories all the time. So I thank you for everything that you do to support United Way in a program such as this. And anytime you have any questions, we'd be more than happy, myself or staff, to come out and speak with you in your office. And Amy, I just wanted to kind of go over a few highlights. Mm -hmm. um, again, we had a few people join us a little bit later. So um, we have a lot of great partners in the program, and I know individual doctors can sign up. Yes. But we also have groups as well. Um, so can you mention a few of those? Absolutely. So um, that's the wonderful thing is that we have individual providers and corporate contracts, one of which being, of course, Lee Health. And um, we have an amazing relationship with them. They do everything from surgeries to um, medical care. We also have a wonderful partnership with Radiology Regional. They never, ever turn down any of our clients. So CT scans, um, MRIs, uh, blood drawn in other locations, uh, Advocate is, is another one with radiation. They have never turned down our patients 
and they even have people that come into their offices these days and say, I have this patient. She's recently lost her. We've been treating her. She lost her insurance. Can you sign her up for we care? And they do that. So it's millions of dollars that they're donating. And um, it just wouldn't be possible without these corporate partnerships. And just recently, we signed a new corporate contract with Hendry Regional Medical. And we had the privilege and the opportunity yesterday to go out to Clewiston, speak with them, um, going out to LaBelle today. And they were just so excited for this program. And the doctor was just saying, you know, he's treating cancer patients. He's like, so you mean that I can send my cancer patients and they can get this care free of charge? And his face had the biggest smile on it. So it's a wonderful thing that we have these great partnerships. Um, and again, can you just mention what the advantage is to the physician um, that's donating the service or the entity other than feeling great about it. Yeah, absolutely. Is that they are receiving some perks too as well. They're receiving sovereign immunity. So that means that um, if anything was happening liability wise, they were to get sued or something, they're protected by the state of Florida. Um, so that takes the ease and the burden of, of these primary care and the physicians, of course, knowing that. However, I can say that in the existence of this program, 20 something years with the Department of Health, they say they've only had a handful of cases such as that. They also receive um, continuing medical education credits, which they really enjoy. And then a waiver of their biannual license fees with the state, which can be a considerable cost. Um, so this is helping the individual contract physician as well as helping our partners like Lee Health, Hendry Regional, Radiology Regional. Um, it's something that, it, that it's a great service to them and helps defray those costs. Awesome. And you know, the, the beauty of this program is that, and we partner and collaborate with everyone in the community, Part of the beauty is that by having it internally, when there are extra things needed, um, we can reach out to our United Way 211 staff um, to see what other resources are available for this family, perhaps because they've been out of work for a long time. Maybe they need assistance with something else like rent or, um, you know, utilities or something like that. Or they might even need specialty medical equipment after their procedure. Amy, do you... I don't want to put this up because I know. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Janine mentions that, and, and that's what we do too, because, you know, many times when they're dealing with these diagnoses is, is that they're either unable to work or provide for their families or do need that rent assistance. And I'll give you the perfect example of um, a young man who was diagnosed with um, stage four cancer, and he had gone into, um, just having a complaint, gone into the emergency room. Uh, we were able, then they found out that he had cancer, um, very invasive through the neck, through the tongue. Um, we referred him to our doctor, Dr. Ann Fuso. He's one of our doctors that has never, ever turned down one of our cases. This was such an invasive cancer. He recruited three other doctors that weren't even um, signed up with us at the time. They provided um, service to this patient. He was able to get the cancer treatment and surgeries, and he needed a suction device um, that they couldn't pay for. We, of course, co coordinated with our 211 manager and director. They said that they had some funding available. We got that. We helped to provide them some with rent assistance. And then through our network with some other um, cancer agencies that United Way funds, we were able to help to get them those assistance. So it's just stories like this that we absolutely love because it's helping that entire family, not just that individual, but reducing the burden on the entire family through our network of providers. And even things such as our VITA tax program. Um, you know, you think about those little things, but then that's, that's where they can have those medical services um, and through our network of providers we also have great partnerships in which they have programs to where if they're going through chemotherapy, they're getting those medications that they need to completely free of charge. And I'll give you an example of one chemotherapy patient. In one month, the charges were $93,000 for one month of chemotherapy for one patient. So it, it really is amazing what you're doing, Amy. Thank you for your work. I know that um, I visited yesterday over to Amy's team and they were all, especially two days ago, they were thrilled to share with me just in, in you know, one week's time, how much mm -hmm. of, you know, an impact services that these providers donated um, was. And it's just incredible. And I'll give you two an example. When we talk about authorizations, many times they will contact us and they'll say, you know, we have a patient coming up, they have an office visit, they have a surgery. And then our patient care coordinators, which there's two of them, Brenda and Nancy, they do a phenomenal job. They provide the authorizations to the doctor's offices 
that then in turn is ensures they receive the sovereign immunity. And sometimes we'll have an office call us, hey, we have the patient right here. Can you provide us with an authorization? And they'll turn around an authorization within a two minute time period. Um, and then of course it has to be updated in electronic medical records sent back out to the office. So there's many steps that are involved. And last quarter we provided 715 authorizations um, for care. So that can be an office visit, a surgery, a lab. And um, so that just tells you the volume of this particular program. And um, Brendan Nancy, you're extremely passionate about this and, and care about the patients and, you know, constantly are working with the doctor's offices, with the patients, um, with the medical providers. So there's a lot of people involved and just trying to keep track of it. So they just such an amazing job. And so this program was one example of $8 million impact last year uh, for our residents in our community. And it's a great service because there's there's nothing, you know, worse than feeling like you have this horrible diagnosis, feeling all alone and knowing that you can't take the steps that you need to get the help that you need. And this program empowers people to do that. And so uh, one of the things that we ask is that you all become advocates for us. When you hear of these stories out there, um, you know, you hear of other people who are, are desperate to get medical care because they are uninsured. We can see you qualify for this program. Um, if you have questions, you can always reach out to Amy. You can also call our United Way 211, which is by simply dialing 211, um, get connected to one of our information and referral specialists, and they'll be able to guide the person to different resources throughout the area, depending on the qualifications. What we'd like to do now is just open it up for any questions. Um, if anybody, you know, if you have a question about the program itself or anything like that or how to get help, please unmute yourself and, and ask away. Good morning, um, Janine. It's Therese. How are you? Great. I'm so glad you could join us. Yeah, one of my favorite programs in mm -hmm. all of Lee County. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I love that story about uh, the uh, stage four neck cancer. You know, Dr. Ann Fuso, I just cannot, I have to comment on that. Mm -hmm. He is such a highly trained subspecialty physician. And this is how I believe all physicians feel. They want to care for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you all give them that opportunity and that space to do that. And when we're always being a patient advocate, a person advocate, what you guys do, you follow through with the housing. I don't know any other organization that does that. And it's so highly impactful. So my question is, what are your barriers um, or concerns right now as far as are you solid with your operations going forward? Are you confident in your ability to sustain this program? And what's the barrier to scale it? Absolutely. And Janine, you can take that or I can. I, I am confident that we yeah. do have the ability to um, sustain what we have moving forward. I will tell you that since we brought the program in-house. Um, Amy has done a great job with her team of reaching out to more physicians. Of course, Therese, I want to say thank you um, for Lee Health's involvement. That was a huge move for us this year um, to get physicians signed on board. And also, um, you know, they've been reaching out to more and more physicians as we forward. I know, Amy, you met with Scott Nygaard and, mm -hmm. and some different people as well. But Amy, what, what are your thoughts about the growth? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that We Care has such a strong history. And Therese, I know that you've done so much within the medical community and um, frequently receive emails of the great things that you're doing. Um, we have some wonderful partnerships um, with We Care, uh, just a longstanding history. And so I think that I'm building upon that foundation, however, bringing just um, new awareness and um, revamping the program within the community. We have a great relationship with the Lee County Medical Society, um, and that is ongoing. What we've done recently is created um, a RAC card uh, brochure to recruit more physicians and more specialty care providers. We also are um, in process with uh, Tony, our marketing manager here at United Way, in which we're creating a testimonial video that will show um, many of the wonderful success stories, as well as speaking with a lot of our providers of why they provide the care. So this will be able um, to be used as a recruitment piece. And um, what we're doing, I think that that's just amazing, is truly looking at 
at our list of providers, um, those ones that are very involved. And I've been going out to doctor's offices and just cultivating those individual relationships and asking for honest feedback of, you know, what have you seen happen in the past? Where have we been? And where are we going in the future? And um, we're always open to that. I think a lot of the doctor's offices this past year, some of our challenges have been that they've been hit extremely hard by COVID. Um, we had one orthopedic office that said, you know, we are just trying to get our own patients in. Can you wait, you know, a month to send us any new cases? And we're always mindful of that. Um, and then we revisited them a month later and they were able to accept our cases. I think, you know, one of the challenging things too is locally here in the community. I was speaking um, with Terry yesterday, head of the Lee uh, Physicians Group, and she was talking about um, the need for just neurologists, that they're recruiting some neurologists. Um, so three of our challenges I'll say is trying to find um, neurologists, orthopedics, and gynecology. Um, right now we had a coworker that was trying to get an appointment at Lee Health with a neurologist and they're on three month waiting period. And so I think that it's it's looking at those challenges too um, of just the general public, much less um, trying to get this charitable care. So that's some of our challenges. And I think that it's just those cultivation of those individual relationships. That's truly what it's all about of how we can work to collectively as a whole um, mm -hmm. to provide those services within the community. And I think Amy's being a little humble with some of this as well, because a lot of times these cases um, there are other challenges that are involved with the clients as well. And some of you may know who are employers out there, transportation is a huge issue in our community. Um, if you're sick and you're trying to get somewhere, you know, bus stops are usually not right around the corner from anyone. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get to an appointment on time um, or just get to the appointment in general. So one of the things that Amy and her team will do is they follow up with the patients to make sure that they remember, okay, you got to bring this with you to the appointment. You've got to, you know, remember it's tomorrow at 9 a.m. You have to be on time because the, the worst thing that, that Amy and her team can let happen is that we have no shows or people who aren't doing what they need to do. Right, Amy? Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you too, this is an interesting thing. I was at um, a networking event one evening with some physicians and <laughs> saying, thank you so much for seeing our patients. And she said, no, you know, the pleasure is all mine. She said, your patients are the most thankful, <laughs> show up most on time. Um, so that was just such a great feeling to know. And we do follow up with them and we make sure to tell them that, hey, if you haven't heard back, we're going to call them. I'll give you a perfect example of transportation. We had um, an elderly gentleman who was taking three buses um, to get to chemotherapy. And I think no man um, that's elderly should having to be having to take a bus. So what we did is we reached out to the Dr. Piper Center. They had um, the companion program in which they signed him up to have somebody to drive him to his chemotherapy appointment so that he wasn't so alone in that. And um, I wear two hats for the organization, as you always do many times in the nonprofit field. I'm also United Way's grant writer. So I've been looking um, and researching different grant opportunities to help build up the We Care program, possibly to provide the transportation. They do have a program called Uber Health. Um, we are looking in, is, is there the lack? Do we need to provide some services that'll help with medications to help offset some of those costs? So we are constantly looking at ways um, just to be innovative and evolved and lift this program up on a day-to-day -day basis. So are there any more questions? Huh? Well, we have something it, after it, the fact. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Bill. So, Amy, uh, basically, these are all uh, specialists that are in your network. So they they can see the, their private physician or under some program. But mm -hmm. then you're finding the specialists for them that are willing to donate their time and their talents to these individuals. Is that is that right? Yes, yes. It's it's very interesting. Um, there's many different cases. So one of which is lots of times we we receive a referral, and that's from maybe a family health center, a primary care physician saying this person needs some specialty access medical care. I think it's maybe cancer. They need some additional tests done. So that's one thing. And then we look through, and they have to be 200% of the poverty level, low income, and completely uninsured. We look through our network of providers and. 
and try to place them. Uh, we send the pertinent medical records, uh, we send the information, and then that um, provider decides whether or not they'll take the patient. Then there's the flip side. Many times we'll receive, let's say, advocate radiology. They're like, I'm treating a patient and they don't have insurance. Can they be part of We Care? We say, absolutely. We sign them up. We do all of the paperwork, the eligibility. We take the, um, all the forms, uh, meet with the clients. And then there's also our partnerships with, um, let's say, Lee Health. And they'll say, you know, we saw this person in the hospital, our hospitalist did. They'll say, we've referred this person to one of our in-house. Um, they need to have a follow-up with a rheumatologist. They need to have a follow-up with a dermatologist. And they'll make that referral. They'll make that appointment. And then we circle back around with that doctor in that doctor's office to do all of the legwork there. Um, we have a great partnership with the healthcare navigators in the hospitals that specialized in head and neck cancer, breast cancer, um, other things. Uh, the social workers will provide our referrals. We have people, we've even gone in the past pre-COVID days, our patient care coordinators would go to the hospital and do some of the paperwork and sign up these patients from the hospital. So it just alleviates that stress and concern at the hospital basis. And Bill, there are a lot of programs in our community for the primary care. Well, not a lot, but there are some. So family health centers is one that Amy's mentioned a few times. We also have the community health care clinics that are around to offer that initial primary care, either on a, you know, on a sliding fee scale, which for most of these people who are qualifying for the program, mm -hmm. they're not really paying for that initial primary care. It's that next step that they absolutely need the assistance with because there is, other than we care, there's not really a system in place in our community for specialty care. No. And we do receive referrals to, um, you know, similar to family health centers is the, the lead community um, centers in which we have a United Way presence there. And a lot of their social workers and staff will send us those referrals to because it's something else that primary care can't take care of. However, um, if a primary care physician would like to provide primary care under the We Care program, there's nothing that limits them from doing that. Any other questions? Well, again, I want to thank you for your time this morning. We feel like this program is is essential to the to the health and well-being of our community. Um, as we move forward with these different programs, none of these will be longer than 30 minutes. Um, we will also be collecting a library of these as well. We're recording these meetings. And so, you know, once we have the library created, we'll be sending out to everyone who's participated. So if there's one that you didn't have the opportunity to see that you wanted to, you can. Or if there's one of these that you would like to share with someone when you know, you'll be able to have the opportunity to do that as well. Um, thank you so much. And if I leave you with one thing today, it's to, you know, please remember that if you know anyone in our community who's in need of services, no matter what it may be, whether it's help with a utility bill, um, you know, aging parent, medical care, um, please encourage them to call our United Way 211 by simply dialing 211 and get connected to one of our specialized information and referral specialists. So, we, um, thank you again for your time this morning, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you Thanks, so Amy. much. Amy, it was great. Thank, thank you. Good job, day. everyone. Thank you.